There's an imminent danger now in the Gulf. There's an imminent danger in, or in, uh, in Afghanistan. There's an imminent danger for anybody that drives a car anywhere. And we get complacent and think, well, everything will be okay. But the danger is imminent, so we got to stay on the right side of God all the time. Amen. And not hesitate. There was a little girl in the Sunday school, and she heard a story about Jonah. And her teacher in the, uh, in the school where she went told her, uh, she was talking about this in school, so she, the teacher said, it's not possible for a fish to swallow a man. Even the biggest whale, which of course, as you know, is not a fish, has a throat that's too small for a man to fit down in. The girl says, no, it says in the Bible, Jonah was swallowed by a, by a big fish and the teacher was imminent. It's the, the, not possible for a fish or a whale to swallow a human being. It's physically impossible. And the little girl said, well, when I get to heaven, I'll ask Jonah. And the teacher said, well, what if he's not in heaven? And the girl says, then you ask him. <laughs> Psalm 143 verse 10 says this. Teach me to do your will for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Lord, this morning as we have this opportunity to, to look into the matters of your word, we pray that the heart of this word will go in where you want it to go, in each person, and it will accomplish what you want it to accomplish. In Jesus' name, amen. The will of God, often very different from our own will, maybe most of the time different from our will, but it has to be our guide. It has to be our goal. Recognizing God's will, when he seems to be leading in a direction that we don't want to go, is to recognize his will as a learned behavior. You have to learn how to do that. You have to learn how to get into his will and how to do what he wants us to do, even if it's not what we think is best. Father knows best, right? <laughs> Most of us are an old enough vintage to remember that. Father knows best. But he saved us, and we owe him our very life. He bought us with the price of his blood, his blood, his precious blood on Calvary. We owe him everything. We can't be getting our own idea when he says, go there, and we can't be getting our own idea and said, no, I don't want to go there. We should go immediately. When he says stop, we should stop immediately. That's a learned behavior. That's something we have to learn to do because it's contrary to our own nature. We can't be in a better place. We can't be in a more productive place than, we are, than when we are in the will of God. You all know the story, or I should say the event of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Lord and the two angels appeared to Abraham. They were on their way to destroy the city of Sodom, and they told him that. And of course, as you recall, Abraham pleaded with them to save the city. And he bargained with God, what if there's 50? What if there's, and he said, what if there's 10? And there weren't enough righteous in the city, not even 10 for God to relent and not destroy the city. The entire city was evil. It was entirely under the control of Satan, as any who do such things as they were doing are under the control of Satan. They were depraved and totally evil in Sodom. Then the angels encountered Lot sitting at the gate of the city. Lot, as you know, was, was Abraham's nephew. And Lot brought them into his house, which was inside the city, fed them and sheltered them. Then there was an encounter at Lot's door, a violent threat. The angels um, that were taken refuge in Lot's house struck the attackers with blindness because they had threatened to break down Lot's door if he wouldn't take those men out to them so they could abuse them. 
in a terrible and disgusting way. But they didn't know they were angels. They appeared just as men. So we pick it up in Genesis chapter 19, 15 to 26. Verse 15, with the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Hurry! Take your wife and your two daughters who are here with who are here or you will be swept away when the city is punished. The judgment of God was coming to this city for their evil. And Lot and his family must have been righteous. But there weren't even ten of them. Only four. So he would have been destroyed with the rest if he did not have some righteousness in his life. I can't expect to get into heaven because of my parents' righteousness. Each one has to come to Christ, his self and herself. So in this account, there is an escape offered to a righteous person, family, when judgment is imminent for the evildoers. Lot and his wife and daughters were at, at least had an opportunity, a warning, that they had to get away from these evil sinners and in a hurry. Verse 16, it starts this way. It says, when he hesitated. Hesitated. You're going to be destroyed with these people. And he hesitated. He's thinking, wait a minute. Hold everything. You can't do that with God. Wait a minute. i got to think it over. But they were told to hurry. Get out of this place or you'll be swept away with the rest. He hesitated. What was it about Lot that he hesitates at the threshold of his very survival? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to us, but we weren't there. What was that? What was it about him? You're going to be destroyed unless you do this in a hurry. And you hesitate? It's like someone is on the roof of a burning building and he won't jump into the you know the that thing that the firefighters use to catch somebody that's jumping off a building it's like he's on a burning and he decides not to jump would you do that would you f be in flames instead not me not me certain destruction is imminent and he hesitates Lot hesitates. My son's friend that worked for the gas company was in that explosion in Tyrone. He was in the basement and that house exploded and he immediately crawled out of there. The woman that was upstairs in the living room died instantly in the explosion. They found her body down in the cellar and he had to crawl out of there. His ears and his arms and his hands got burned. He's okay. But he didn't hesitate. He didn't say, wait a minute, should I get out of here? Should... No, he scrambled to get out of there. Probably had to, on his hands and knees to get back out of the steps because the place was on fire all around. Hesitate? Certain destruction is imminent? Maybe he wanted to pack some stuff. Maybe, maybe he didn't believe what they were saying. You know, he, he knew who the angels were because he bowed before them when they came to him at the gate. He bowed down before them. He knew they weren't just ordinary men. So we do know that Lot was very materialistic. When he, when he and Abraham's parted ways, Abraham, he said, you choose the land that you want. And he picked the best for himself, which was the plains down around Sodom and Gomorrah. The plains there were good for grazing, and he had flocks. That was his wealth. So he chose the best land for himself. So he was a materialistic person. So maybe he wanted to pack some stuff. Wait a minute can't wait you can't wait you can't wait you can't hesitate so why did he move into the city he was a man of the plain a man of the fields he came with Abraham from um, where did they come from <laughs> where did they come from Ur of the Chaldees and they moved about in tents Abraham was still moving about in tents but he moved into the city he knew what they were doing in the city. He knew that was evil, but he went in there anyway. 
Maybe there were benefits to living in the city. Maybe they pick up your trash. I don't know. There must have been some reason he wanted to be in there. Maybe he had achieved some status. He was sitting at the city gate. Usually those are people that are in charge or in the Bible that are sitting at the city gates. But he didn't have so much status that they didn't threaten him to bring those people out to them. He wasn't sure that he wanted to run. Hesitation. Maybe it wasn't true. Maybe it was an idle threat. After all, he had never seen a city swept away before. He had to think it over. If something's happening to you and, you, and, and, you're, and your threat is imminent, you have to think it over? <laughs> you get out of there. Maybe I can sell my flocks before I go. If I leave right now, I'll be destitute. I have to run out with just what's on my back. Just run out with just with the shirt on my back. And all my wealth will be left here. But whatever the reason was, he hesitated. And that's a lesson for us. Not to hesitate, but to move when God warns us about something. Or when he wants us to do something. Continuing in verse 16. The men grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and his two daughters and led them safely out of the city for the Lord was merciful to them. Can you picture that? He's hesitating so they grabbed him and dragged him out of town. Praise God for his mercy. In spite of himself. Wow. God's mercy is available even in our own weakness. God was merciful to them, even though Lot wasn't all in about it. Even though he hesitated, it seems as though Lot was vacillating between faith in God and faith in his own self, his possessions, his accomplishments. It seems as though Lot had couldn't decide, going back and forth. If the angels hadn't grabbed him, he probably would have perished with his stuff. But they grabbed him and dragged him out of there. How good God is. Law was saved in spite of himself. I was saved in spite of myself. How good God is. I couldn't do anything to save myself. I was being drawn. Lot honored the visitors when they came. There was something in him that caused him to honor and try to protect them. There was righteousness in him. Maybe he learned it from Uncle Abe. In verse 17, there's a more urgent warning. It says in 17, as soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, flee for your lives. Don't look back. Looking back is another way of hesitating. What's happening to our lives? Looking back. We must never look back. Don't look back. Looking back to remember what God has brought us out of is okay. But to look back wistfully and wishing we were still in it like the Israelites did, well, that's not a good thing. Because it's if you remember the pleasure of sin, then it's dangerous. And the Israelites were remembering fondly how they sat around pots of, what did it say, leeks or garlic or meat or something. They were just remembering that they had food when they were slaves. They were in slavery and they looked back and wished they were still there. It's crazy. We can be led away and enticed looking back wistfully at what our former life was. Continuing then in verse 17, he says, and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. Further directives. Don't stop in the plain. Remember, the plain is where Lot in his selfishness had chosen to go. That's where his flocks were. His wealth was in the flocks. People's wealth was in their flocks in those days. 
His blessings were in the flocks. God had prospered him in that plain. Amazingly, God prospers us in spite of ourselves. <laughs> he does. But sometimes we don't recognize it, right? Verse 18, but Lot said to them, No, my lords, please. Now he's hesitating again. No, please. In other words, he doesn't want to go up on a mountain. Your servant, referring to himself, has found favor in your eyes, and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me, and I will die. This is a low point in Lot's faith. He knows that his life is being spared, but he doesn't have faith to believe that God can help him to get to the mountains. Or maybe he doesn't like mountains. Maybe he doesn't think he can climb up there. But that's where he's told to go. Then verse 20 says, Look, there's a town near enough to us. Do we sometimes propose alternatives to God? He proposed an alternative to, to, instead of just doing what God leads you to do. You try to get a better idea across to the Lord. <laughs> do you ever do that? That's what he's doing. There's a town near enough to us to run to. So he's proposing what looks best or what looks most doable or most comfortable to him instead of seeking God's will and directly adhering to God's will. These are all things that we have to be careful that we don't do. Continuing in verse 20, it's small. Let me flee to it. Very small, isn't it? He's trying to talk these angels and allowing him to do things his own way instead of just what God said. So what's the significance of this small town? You know, Lot, Lot um, was a town type of guy. He was a townie. That's why he wound up in Sodom. He's a, he's a townie. He didn't stay in the field with his flocks. He was in Sodom, in, in town, instead of living in the tents. Town, the tents wasn't good enough for him. So he said, send me, so he's saying, send me to this little town. At least I can live in a house. <laughs> At least there will be a wall. At least there will be a well. I can set up deals with the people. Can you see what's maybe going on in his head? I can sit at the town gates. I can have comfort. I can have a life my way. Things in the world do appeal. But we have to be careful. Very careful. That we're not like Lot. Still in verse 20, he says, Then my life will be spared. See, he doesn't trust God enough to strike out in faith. He wants to have people around him in this town. God would have helped him on the mountain. So, you know what? He doesn't even think he'll survive unless he goes to a town. And God said, go on the mountain. But, he, but he's insisting, i got to go to a town. And so the angel said to him, Very well, I will grant this request too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of. God gives us chance after chance to operate outside of his will. That's what he was doing. He was giving him a chance to operate. He was having free will. And he, he allowed him to do it. If we just treat him with complete trust, his purpose would be accomplished in us and through us. And verse 22, he says, But flee there quickly, because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That is why the town, um, the town was called Zawar, which is from Hebrew, it means little. So that's, that's why that town was called that. Uh, it wasn't called that before, but it was called that after. And I think there was still uh, some evidence of that town. Verse 23, by the time Lot reached Zawar, the sun had risen over the land. Verse 24, when then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah, 
from the Lord out of the heavens. This wasn't a volcano. This was burning sulfur out of, out of heaven from God. He rained it down on them. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, destroying all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. She looked back wistfully. My life is back, so I want to have another look. But he said, don't look back. So now Lot is left with just his two daughters. He couldn't even bury his wife. And his big plan to go to Zohar, that didn't work out too well. I mean, he was allowed to do it, but it didn't work out very well. Genesis 1930, Lot and his two daughters left Zoar and settled in the mountains. So he, was at, he went to that little town, but they didn't stay there. They went to the mountains. It says, for he was afraid to stay in Zoar. He and his two daughters lived in a cave. So he wound up on a mountain anyway, where God directed him to go. But this it wasn't working out very well for Lot. How's that working out for you, Lot? You should have gone where God wanted you to go in the first place. Now he ended up in a cave. Things got even worse. His daughters got him drunk and they laid with him. And from this ungodly union came two nations, Moab and Ammon. And the last we heard about Lot, that was the last we heard about him. His life entered in tragedy. Ruth was a Moabitess. The Ammonites worshipped Chemosh, which was an evil god. Human sacrifice, infant sacrifice. No one can today can trace their lineage back to Lot. Tragedy happened because he hesitated, because he had a better idea than God, because he didn't do immediately what God said to do. Tragedy. God revealed his plan to Lot, but Lot had a better idea. Did you ever get like that? Wait a minute, Lord, how about this idea? <laughs> God knows what's in your head. He had a better idea. He had his own plan. You ever do that? I think we all do that sometimes. He pleaded to be allowed to pursue his own comfort instead of submitting to God's will and going on to the mountain. Believers need to, yield, to, to live a yielded life before God. We need to be yielded. Lot was all wrapped up in his own life, his own positions, his own comforts, his own will, his own ideas. And Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Remember what happened to her for looking back. Don't look back on where you came from. Don't be the, like the Israelites who wanted to go back to slavery in Egypt. Believers knew, need to do certain things uh, in life. Number one, we need to be hearing from God. John 10, 27, it says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. We need to hear from God. That's not hard to do. We have prayer time, and we give God a shopping list of things we want Him to do, and then we say, Goodbye, Lord, I'll see you later, instead of giving God a time to impress upon us what He wants us to do. We need to be hearing from God. In Isaiah 30, 21, whatever, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. We do hear from God if we listen and if we seek that. We need to seek His will. Ephesians 5, 7, 15 to 17. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. That would have been some good advice for Lot. In verse 16, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. You see, Lot was focused on his own will, not what the Lord's will was. We need to be in obedience to God. 
John 15, 14, you are my friends if you do what I command. <laughs> Lot wasn't doing that. He said, wait a minute. I don't like the sound of that. 2 John 1, 6, and this is love that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. And then we need to walk with God. Micah 4, 5. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Life is a walk. We are on a path. Do we choose our own way? Sometimes. Sometimes. Or do we walk carefully with God? Being careful always to seek his will. We can be like Lot sometimes, can't we? It's so easy to be like that. But we have to be careful to hear from God. He wasn't, he, he, the, the angels were just telling him what God said. Hear from God. Seek his will. Even if it's not in our comfort zone or what we thought would, we would like to see happen or what we think is best. Sometimes what God wants us to do or go through is totally, vastly different than what we would have thought. I'm not really a minister, but I did stay in a Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> No, I didn't want anything to do with being a minister. That wasn't my idea. I had to be in his will. I had to, I had to capitulate. I had to obey. And then we have to walk with God. Walk with God. He's happy to walk with us if we stay on that path, that straight and narrow path that leads to eternal life. Amen? Would you stand? Dear Lord, we thank you today for the power of your word, the power, Lord, that the word has in our lives and that it gets into our hearts and that it, that, and it rules, Lord. Your will is always going to happen. If we're not in your will, then your will will happen anyway without us. So, Lord, help us to stay in your will. Help us to stay. Because you'll accomplish your purposes with somebody else. Your, your purposes will always be accomplished, Lord. But help us to be there, to be profitable servants for you, Lord. By, by being in obedience, by seeking your will by looking to be just just whatever you want us to be and to do whatever you want us to do and that all the time so as we go our separate ways we pray that you will keep us safe keep us in prayer and keep us in your will until we meet again in jesus name amen